segment I want to talk about dimensions. And to understand that, let's just go and tune your radio. And as you tune your radio, watch as it goes up and watch as it goes down, all the different radio waves and different stations you've got out there. Let's go across now and tune your TV. Similarity. Tune it up, tune it down. Wow. Look at all the TV channels we've got out there. Well, let's go out and let's tune our worlds. Wow. Look at all the other dimensions out there that we don't see. You see, we live in one skinny little band called visible light. But above the visible light, you've got the ultraviolet, gamma rays, x-rays, cosmic photons. Below it, infrared, radio waves, TV waves, government trigger plane technology, or band technology, beta, alpha, theta, delta, brain waves. It's just like tuning the radio, tuning the TV, you tune the worlds. We look out there in this skinny little band called molecular structure, visible light. One skinny band of visible light. And everything we see out there is the radio frequency of our eyesight of visible light. Yet, if we go to astronomy and we look out at the stars and we look at the infrared frequency, what do we see? We see whole galaxies that exist in the infrared frequency that we can't see with the naked eye because we only see one dimension, visible light. So therefore, you've got to understand above and below will be other dimensions. And above that, and above that will be other dimensions. And above that are other dimensions. And below will be always other dimensions. For just like the radio tuning up, we can tune up the worlds. And there are other beings living in other dimensions. Now what takes place is when we take drugs and alcohol, and we open wormholes into these dimensions, we're tuned into their world. Now once we tune to their world, the universe is all about balance. They now have a right to enter your world. And when these beings enter your world, then we get the multiple personalities. We get the bipolar, the schizophrenia. We get a whole range of voices in the head and other events take place because we have entered the dimension of another, and that dimension now has a right to enter our, our dimension. Once in our dimension, it now starts to play around the physical vehicle and try to take over the physical vehicle. Because everything needs a vehicle. And once trapped in our dimension, your vehicle is now what it's sharing with you. This goes through a whole range of other beings out there. You could have internal entities created by the act of a thought, which have evolved from the thought, to the thought form, to the life form, to the internal entity status, where it's trying to take over. You have the external entity, where he's been let loose. He's out there, might be at the local pub. The moment you drink alcohol and lower your defences, these beings can enter. And the moment they enter, they take over. How many times do you hear people say, had a great time last night, don't remember a thing that happened. That's because they weren't driving the vehicle. Let's go and sit in the court cases. You know, I sat for eight weeks and I listened to every single case going through the courts. I heard the youth say, I don't know your honour why I keep doing the same thing over and over. He's stuck in time. I don't know your honour, we'll have a few beers, it's like something takes over. He does. I mean, they're telling you what's going on. No one is listening to the spirit of the bean in what it's telling you. Until we start to listen, how can we ever understand and how can we make changes? You've got prison systems out there. Look at the repeat offenders. Repeating over and over and over the same scenarios. Why? Because no one's ever unfolded time and space on those dimensions to find the cause of the effect of what they're stuck in. The moment we unfold time and space in that dimension, time will loop itself. It will then put you outside time. And instantly that dimension that was no longer affects you. We look at the repeat offenders through the alcohol. We look at the voices in the head. You know, I've been in high security prisons. People now have voices in the head. We bring up the spirits and other forces in there and take them out. Next day, no more voice in the head. They're no longer mentally insane. And they've been freed. We have to understand that we are multidimensional. And as multidimensional beings in a multidimensional world, there are many other dimensions out there. We just live in one dimension. Therefore, when we violate laws by entering other dimensions, and I mean laws, there are laws of law, L-A-W-S of L-O-R-E, which is the universal knowledge of the dimensions. 
who you enter the dimension of another becomes governed by the laws of that dimension. In other words, you enter their dimension, they have the right to enter your dimension. You ever stop to think, you go into a bank, when you enter the bank, whose game do you enter? You're governed by the laws of the dimension. The bank, the bank manager. Hop in a taxi, you're governed by the laws of that taxi. Go to someone else's home, you're governed by the laws of that house. You see, everybody has a field around them which is known as the Taurus field. And that field around you is your field. Now, nothing can enter your field unless you let it in. So what do they do? They set up all these wonderful games to get you to entrap you and to get you to open the door. No matter what you call in, the moment you call anything external to internal, you disempower your spirit and you give power to something outside of your reality and permission to enter you. You know, we do with people when we go back as a young child. And what happened as a young child for this force to enter? Well, I don't want to be here. I shouldn't be here, I've got the wrong parents. Well, I don't want to be here. The law of intent is now activated. That becomes an invitation for something that does. I wish I was dead. That's an invitation for something that wants to live. I wish I had a friend. That's an invitation for the little friend to appear. You see, the first law in this universe is the law of intent. Whatever that intent is and the invisible is put out, it will start the creation first in the invisible, then it'll work its way through into the visible. Now, to understand how to change the visible, we must change the invisible. So we look at structures today. We look at nature. Go back into nature. Look out there in nature, the trees. You know, there's not two trees the same. There's nothing the same in nature. Everything is perfect in its own dimension. Everything is perfect in its own creation. Yet there are no two exactly the same. So why does our mental health system turn around and put everything in a little box and categorize it in this little box? And put everybody in the same issues of similarity in the box. You know, I've worked on thousands, tens of thousands of people in 40 years of research. I have never found two cases the same because every creation is separate, independent, individual. And only by accessing the cause of the effect of that individual creation can we unfold time and space on the dimension and change the past in the present, which then loops time and changes the future. This is what we have to understand today to make changes for the future of mental health. Until this is done, nothing is ever going to change. Anybody can classify you and categorize you into their own perception of reality. But what is reality? You know, if I put an altered state, if I hypnotize somebody in front of you, create an altered state, and I create an orange tree, and I let them pick oranges off the orange tree, eat the oranges, remember the oranges, and people will come up and say, what's it like to eat something that didn't exist? And their comment is, don't be stupid, I know what I ate. Normally we'd say that was an illusion. But for the five people that ate that orange, it was a reality. The question is, what is a reality? For it's only an illusion to those that weren't in that reality that was just created as a reality. The question is, what is a reality? Whatever you perceive life to be, whatever you perceive is your reality. Now, to understand how to change a reality, we must understand the perception of that reality and where it came from. For only then can we understand how to change that reality. So, what do we have out there today? Today we have all these modalities out there that are accessing the soul of a being. The soul are the experiences created by the being that are now locked in your cells, external to internal. Everything you've ever taken on, whether it be a thought, whether it be a projection of another, whether it be the program of another, programmed through your schools, programmed the teacher, programmed by the church, whatever you're programmed, whatever projected upon you that you took on, that gets locked into your cells and becomes part of your soul. Once locked in, it will reproduce itself. 
therefore it reinforces, it reinforces its control over you as a program. So people out there today running programs constantly, not knowing where they came from because they haven't stopped to realise that they've been programmed. Only when we access the spirit does it know how, when, where and why any created reality was ever created. And the moment it tells you where it was created, the age, no matter how far back in time. It may have been at the moment of conception. You know, I had a doctor, impatient all his life. The moment of conception, and what's happening to the spirit, the father's raping mother and he wants it over and done with. She wants it over and done with. At that moment of time, that little spirit locked in, I want everything over and done with. All his life he wants everything over and done with, there's his impatience till we unfold time and space on that dimension. You see, the moment of conception, that spirit is aware everything is taking place. Inside mother, outside mother, the conversation, it is aware of everything. Because it's a being that's been here before, but it's waiting for the little body to grow up so it can get on and do what it needs to be done. But as a spirit, it is aware of everything that's taking place. As a spirit, it can have trauma that's come through time. And that trauma can reset itself up. To understand that. They didn't teach you when you went to school that when you take three steps, you take three dimensions of time. You take a past, you take a present and you take a future. The last step is where you were, the present step is where you are and the next choice you make will be the future. You can't survive without three dimensions of time, otherwise you'd be frozen in time. Now, if you're frozen in time, suspended animation, for thousands of years. And all of a sudden one day something woke you, you would continue on the next step. Think about that for a moment. Because this is what happens with trauma that's come through time with the spirit. You can have a trauma where you have died a traumatic death. And that last few moments of death, the last memories of trauma locked in you. That now becomes suspended in animation, suspended in time and space. It becomes what's known as a sleeper. And one day, we may have a trigger that'll awaken the sleeper. And the moment the sleeper awakens, that dimension now becomes alive again to continue its journey. And the pain and the suffering, the psoriasis, whatever it was in the past that you've got, whether it be licking the skin, licking the body, will be active. And you don't know why it's been active. You don't know why the issue you're going through. Until we unfold time and space, on the trauma of the past, loop time puts you outside time and instantly the trauma of the past will disappear. This is the same as the epigenetics, as scientists call it. But they can't access the epigenetics. Well, why can't they access it? You see, we can access the trauma of the great, 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 great grandmother through the hologram of time. And she'll be talking out of your body telling you of the trauma that took place in the past. We're dealing with stolen generation over 150 years ago. And the spirit of great great grandmother comes through crying her eyes out. What's taking place? They've just taken my children. I can't afford to love any more of my children because I don't know whether to come and take the rest. She then shut down. She then passed that down through the soul into the ancestors, into her daughter. Her daughter, her daughter, her daughter, and today they can't associate with the children until we unfold time and space on the trauma that took place with the spirit of the ancestor way back in time. And we look time in the dimension, we change the dimension. That then changes the trauma that now passed down the soul through time of the vehicle. And they can go on working with the children. You've got to understand the bigger game in life. The beings have been manipulating our life for a long time, our world for a long time, our dimension for a long time. You've got to go back and look at what really took place and why. And you see the key to all of this when you go back in time is about traumatising the spirit. If they can traumatise the spirit, they can get access to the soul. So what do they do? Let's go back. Let's go back to the end of the last cycle. The Aztec ripped out 30,000 hearts in one day. Traumatise 30,000 spirits and trap the souls in the future cycles of time. 
Let's go back to Inquisition. They're going to kill you. Why they torture you before they kill you? They torture you before they kill you to get you to submit. That now gives them access to the soul of your future. Let's go back to Bosnia and Sarajevo and have a look where they went through and they killed two members of every family. Why was that done? To traumatise the spirits. To traumatise the spirit of the families. To traumatise the spirit of the country. And to trap the souls of these beings into the future cycles of time. Now look at our world and what's taking place by forces that have been manipulated in our world for eons of time. I look at politicians and hierarchy people that have entered into the secret society thinking that they're going to be illuminated ones. Illuminated? Sure. There will be knowledge all right. But what's taking place is through occultism they enter the game of another. And these beings set up games of entrapment through initiations and the rituals. So eventually these people are taken over and manipulated and put in positions of power to manipulate our world these people because they've entered the games of other subject the laws of the game they enter. I teach the students how to control the game, how to deal with these beings and how to bring them into your game. And once in your game you can now remove these beings because they have violated law by entering the game of another and entering our dimension. Politicians, people in secret societies that have entered and feel that they have attachments, they can be clear. We can assist you, we can clear you. If you're born under ancestral lines of ritual families, then the vehicle has the right, these beings have the right to their dimension. They have the rights to your vehicle at the moment of birth. What does that mean? It means that when your spirit enters the vehicle at birth, so does the draconian. He has a right to the vehicle because the ancestors donated you before you've been born by doing the game of another. Again, these beings can be brought up. We can unfold time and space and we clear these dimensions and give you back power of yourself and give your spirit back control of its vehicle. We live in a multi-dimensional world that's been manipulated by other dimensions for thousands of years. We are at the end of the cycle. This is about taking back control of our vehicles. This is about taking back control of our world, metaphysically. For when we change the metaphysics of our world, we change the physical of our world. And this is where we're heading today. Understanding how to take back, how to awaken the spirit from its sleep. How to awaken it from the amnesia of the vehicle and the programming that was put into the vehicle. So it becomes awake. And when it awakens itself, it sees the game and all the dimensions that's really been taking place.